Ferdinand Adolf Heinrich August Graf von Zeppelin, July 8, 1838, March 8, 1917, was a German general and later aircraft manufacturer, who founded the Zeppelin Airship Company. Family and personal life Ferdinand was the scion of a noble family. Zeppelin, the family's eponymous hometown, is a small community outside the town of Butzow in Mecklenburg. Ferdinand was the son of Wurttemberg minister and Hofma Erschwalb Friedrich Jerome Wilhelm Karl Graf von Zeppelin, 1807-1886, and his wife Amelie Françoise Pauline, born Macaird Hogger 1816-1852. Ferdinand spent his childhood with his sister and brother at their Gersberg Manor near Constance where he was educated by private tutors and lived there until his death. On August 7, 1869 Ferdinand married Isabella Fren von Wolf in Berlin. She was from the house of Altschwanberg, present-day, Galbine town in Latvia, then part of Livonia. They had a daughter, Helene, Hella, von Zeppelin, 1879-1967, who in 1909 married Alexander Graf von Brandenstein Zeppelin, 1881-1949. Ferdinand had a nephew Baron Max von Demingen who was to later volunteer at the start of World War I, after he was past military age, to become general staff officer assigned to the military airship LZ-12 Saxon. Army Career in 1853 Count Zeppelin left to attend the Polytechnic at Stuttgart, and in 1855 he became a cadet of the military school at Ludwigsburg and then started his career as an army officer in the Army of Württemberg. By 1858, Zeppelin had been promoted to lieutenant, and that year he was given leave to study science, engineering and chemistry at Tübingen. The Prussians mobilizing for the Austro-Sardinian War interrupted this study in 1859 when he was called up to the Ingenieur Corps, Prussian Engineering Corps, at Ulm. In 1863 Zeppelin took leave to act as an observer for the Union's Army of the Potomac in the American Civil War in Virginia. During the Battle of Fredericksburg, a Union defeat, he launched a balloon with a soldier aboard from Chatham Manor overlooking the city. Later, Zeppelin traveled to the Upper Midwest with a party that probably included two Russians. Led by Native American, probably Ojibwe, guides, they canoed and portaged from the western end of Lake Superior up the St. Louis River and across to Crow Wing, Minnesota and on the Upper Mississippi River. On reaching St. Paul, Via stagecoach and hired carriage, Zeppelin encountered German-born itinerant balloonist John Steiner and made his first aerial ascent with him from a site near the International Hotel in downtown St. Paul on 19 August. Many years later he attributed the beginning of his thinking about dirigible light than aircraft to this experience. In 1865 Zeppelin was appointed adjutant of the King of Württemberg and as general staff officer participated in the Austro-Prussian War of 1866. He was awarded the Rittergruß, Knight's Cross, of the Order of Distinguished Service of Württemberg. In the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-1871 a reconnaissance mission behind enemy lines during which he narrowly avoided capture, made him famous among Germans. From 1882 until 1885 Zeppelin was commander of the 19th Allens in Ulm, and was then appointed to be the envoy of war Timberg in Berlin. In 1890 he gave up this post to return to army service, being given command of a Prussian cavalry brigade. His handling of this at the 1890 Autumn Miniverse was severely criticized and he was forced to retire from the army, albeit with the rank of general Airships, 
Ferdinand von Zeppelin served as an official observer with the Union Army during the American Civil War. During the Peninsular Campaign, he visited the balloon camp of Thaddeus S. C. Lowe shortly after Lowe's services were terminated by the Army. Von Zeppelin then traveled to St. Paul, MN where the German-born former Army balloonist John Steiner offered tethered flights. His first ascent in a balloon, made at St. Paul, Minnesota during this visit, is said to have been the inspiration of his later interest in aeronautics. Zeppelin's ideas for large dirigibles was first expressed in a diary entry dated March 25, 1874. Inspired by a recent lecture given by Heinrich von Steffen on the subject of world postal services and air travel, he outlined the basic principle of his later craft, a large rigidly framed outer envelope containing a number of separate gas bags. In 1887 the success of Charles Renard and Arthur Krebs' airship La France prompted him to send a letter to the King of Württemberg about the military necessity for dirigibles and the lack of German development in this field. After his resignation from the army in 1891 at age 52, Zeppelin devoted his full attention to airships. He hired the engineer Theodor Gross to make tests of possible materials and to assess available engines for both fuel efficiency and power-to-weight ratio. He also had air propellers tested and strove to obtain higher purity hydrogen gas from suppliers. Zeppelin was so confident of his concept that in June 1891 he wrote to the King of Württemberg's secretary announcing he was to start building, and shortly after requested a review from the Prussian Army's Chief of General Staff. The next day Zeppelin almost gave up as he realized he had underestimated air resistance, but resumed work on hearing that Rudolf Hans Barch von Sixfeld made light but powerful engines, information soon shown to be over-optimistic. Whereupon Zeppelin urged his supporter Max von Duttenhofer to press Daimler motor and Gesellschaft for more efficient engines so as not to fall behind the French. Duttenhofer wrote to Gross threatening to withdraw support, and Zeppelin shortly afterwards sacked Gross, citing Gross' lack of support and writing that he was an obstacle in my path. Despite these setbacks, Zeppelin's organization had refined his idea. A rigid aluminium framework covered in a fabric envelope, separate multiple internal gas cells, each free to expand and contract thus obviating the need for balanets, modular frame allowing addition of sections and gas cells, controls, engines and gondola rigidly attached. After publishing the idea in March 1892 he hired the engineer Theodor Kober who started work testing and further refining the design. Zeppelin submitted Kober's 1893 detailed designs to the Prussian Airship Service, whose committee reviewed it in 1894. In June 1895 this committee recommended minimum funds be granted but withdrew this offer and rejected the design in July. One month later, in August 1895, Zeppelin received a patent for Cobra's design, described as an airship train, Lentbearer Luftfahrzeug MIT Mirren Hunter and Ander and Andrew and Trag Corpern, steerable airship train with several carrier structures arranged one behind another. The patent describes an airship consisting of three rigid sections flexibly connected. The front section, intended to contain the crew and engines, was 117.35 meters (385.0 feet) long with a gas capacity of 9514 cubic meters (336,000 cubic feet). The middle section was 16 meters. 52 feet 6 in, long with an intended useful load of 599 kilograms, 1,321 pounds, and the rear section 39.93 meters, 131.0 feet, 
long with an intended load of 1,996 kilograms, 4,400 pounds. In early 1896, Zeppelin's lecture on steerable airship designs given to the Association of German Engineers, VDI, so impressed them that the VDI launched a public appeal for financial support for him. This led to a first contact with Karl Berg who supplied aluminium alloys which Zeppelin had tested, and by May 1898 they, together with Philip Holzmann, Daimler, Max von Eth, Karl von Lind, and Friedrich Voith, had formed the joint stock company Gesellschaft zur Förderung der Luftschifffahrt. Zeppelin invested 441,000 marks, over half the total capital. Actual construction then started of what was to be the first successful rigid airship, the Zeppelin LZ-1. Berg's involvement with the project would later be the cause of allegations that Zeppelin had used the patent and designs of David Schwartz's airship of 1897. Berg had signed a contract with Schwartz under the terms of which he undertook not to supply aluminium to any other airship manufacturer. He later made a payment to Schwartz's widow as compensation for dissolving this arrangement. Claims that Zeppelin had been influenced by Schwartz were denied by Eckener in 1938 and also rejected by later historians. Zeppelin's design was radically different in both its scale and its framework from that of Schwartz. On July 2, 1900, Zeppelin made the first flight with the LZ-1 over Lake Constance near Friedrichshafen in southern Germany. The airship rose from the ground and remained in the air for 20 minutes, but was damaged on landing. After repairs and some modifications two further flights were made by LZ-1 in October 1900, however the airship was not considered successful enough to justify investment by the government, and since the experiments had exhausted Count Zeppelin's funds, he was forced to suspend his work. Zeppelin still enjoyed the support of the King of Württemberg, who authorized a state lottery which raised 124,000 marks. A contribution of 50,000 marks was received from Prussia, and Zeppelin raised the remainder of the necessary money by mortgaging his wife's estates. Still supported by Daimler and Karl Berg, construction of his second airship, the LZ-2 was started in April 1905. It was completed by 30 November, when it was first taken out of its hangar, but a ground handling mishap caused the bows to be pulled into the water, damaging the forward control surfaces. Repairs were completed by January 17, 1906, when LZ-2 made its only flight. Too much ballast was jettisoned on takeoff causing the airship to rise to an altitude of 427 meters, 1,401 feet. Here a stiff breeze was encountered, and although the airship is at first able to overcome this, the failure of the Ford engine due to cooling problems followed by the failure of the other due to a broken clutch spring left the airship at the mercy of the wind. It was brought down near Kisselg in the Alga Mountains with some damage caused by the stern striking some trees during mooring, but was more severely damaged by high winds the following night, and had to be dismantled. In May 1906, work as started on a third airship, LZ-3. This was the same size and configuration as LZ-2, but had a greater gas capacity. Finished by the end of the year. It made two successful flights at a speed of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, and in 1907 attained a speed of 36 miles per hour, 58 kilometers per hour. The success of LZ-3 produced a change in the official attitude to his work, and the Reichstag voted that he should be awarded 500,000 marks to continue his work. However the purchase by the government of an airship was made conditional on the successful completion of a 24-hour trial flight. 
Knowing that this was beyond the capabilities of LZ-3, work was started on a larger airship, the LZ-4. This first flew on June 20, 1908. The final financial breakthrough only came after the Zeppelin LZ-4 was destroyed by fire at Ictradindon after breaking free of its moorings during a storm. The airship's earlier flights had excited public interest in the development of the airships, and a subsequent collection campaign raised over 6 million German marks. The money was used to create the Luftschiff Ba Zeppelin Gum and the Zeppelin Foundation, Zeppelin Stiff Tongue. Following the destruction of LZ-4, LZ-3, which had been damaged when the floating hangar broke free of its mooring during a storm, was repaired, at the same time it was lengthened by 8 meters. It was reinflated on October 21, 1908 and after a series of short test flights a flight lasting 5 hours 55 minutes took place on 27 October with the Kaiser's brother, Admiral Prince Heinrich, on board. On 7 November, with Crown Prince William as a passenger, it flew 80 kilometers. 50 miles, to Donis Chingian, where the Kaiser was then staying. In spite of poor weather conditions, the flight succeeded. Two days later LZ-3 was officially accepted by the government and on 10 November Zeppelin was rewarded with an official visit to Friedrichshafen by the Kaiser, during which a short demonstration flight over Lake Constance was made and Zeppelin awarded the Order of the Black Eagle. Although a replacement for LZ-4, the LZ-5 was built and accepted into army service as L-2, Zeppelin's relationship with the military authorities continued to be poor, and deteriorated considerably due to his criticism of the army following the loss of L-2, which was carried away from its moorings and wrecked on April 25, 1910. However, the business director of Luftschiff Ba Zeppelin, Alfred Kohlsman, came up with a scheme to capitalize on the public enthusiasm for Zeppelin's airships by establishing a passenger carrying business. Up until 1914 the German Aviation Association, Deutsche Luftschiffsgesellschaft or DELAG, transported 37,250 people on over 1,600 flights without an incident. Within a few years the Zeppelin revolution began creating the age of air transportation.